If genealogy excited me so much, I thought maybe it would be interesting to young people. Well, we're all narcissistic at some level or another, and we want to know how we got here, and what's our relationship to the cosmos. The only way to begin that journey is to find out the names and the stories about the individuals on your family tree. Oh, I found it. We can start looking for our own families. And I know that you guys before have talked with your family members to kind of get some names and some dates. There are some of us who are going to be able to find records in the United States, as long as our ancestors were here at the right time. But we might run into some issues if your ancestors maybe weren't here by that time. I just want to make sure that everyone knows that we might not be able to find a record for everybody. So go for it, and I will come around to everyone to see how everything's going, and I will get you. One of the great strengths of this camp is the diversity of the students. They bring unique perspectives and backgrounds, ancestrally, historically. Do you know anything currently about this person? Uh, not really. But with that comes challenges, particularly for a science like genealogy, right, which is largely, but not exclusively, driven by the availability of documentation. I can't believe we found him out of everybody else. Everyone that's living in the United States in 1940 should be on the census. Like 1940 and under, or 1940 and up? 1940 and under. Oh, uh, so like it can't be like 1941? They might be on a different record, and we could try to find them on a different record, but they're not going to be on the census. So the most important five, information, I think, for them to get from their parents would be their parents grandparents, so the campers' great-grandparents. That would be ideal, to know even just the names and general idea of where they're from. They're all so old. Well, that's what a great-grandparent is. <laughs> By definition, they are old. <laughs> the first thing that all genealogists want to find is what we call a vital record. An important event in your life, there's three of them. One of them is your birth. Death and marriage. Death and marriage, yes. Those are the three most important records for a genealogist to find because it gives us the most information about the person themselves and it almost always gives information about their parents. And that's what everyone's always trying to find, right? We're always trying to find the next step and the next step. I thought it was going to be easy because I have the computer, I have the website ready, and I have the information to type in. I'm going to have to search all of this stuff up. Genealogy is detective work. It's painstaking. It's easy to make mistakes, particularly if you have a name like Smith or Johnson. Or... There are a lot of names that are closely related. No, this is somebody else's tree with the same last name as you. So it has to be done very carefully, but that's good training for a student, too. I found my great-great-grandfather yes. and my great-grandfather. Ah, Fred Hightower. 23 years old, Whoa. married. At the age of 19. Married at the age of 19 whether able to read and write, and he could read and write. And in those days, a lot of people could not, which is why that was on the census. So that was a very important piece of information. Her birthplace is New York. Okay. The first two sources that we like to use are census and vital records. And then we move on to some of those harder records that will really fill in more narrative. But then we want to know more about our ancestors' lives, right? We want to know the stories. Newspapers are a great way to learn more about an ancestor. Some of the newspapers from like the 1920s and 30s, they were really big busybodies. So if someone went on a trip, they would print it in the newspaper. Oh my goodness. If someone had a party, they'd print it in a newspaper. Which is what happened with the newspaper articles on my uncle Dale. This is Dale here. He's one of my favorite ancestors. So I know from this that my uncle Dale was an actor in the church play. I can also tell from this article that he was a Methodist because that's what the ME church is. So I know two things about Dale. If we go to the next article, we can tell that Dale was a track star. So Dale Brown skipped the high hurdles in rapid fashion for a win. Yay! All right, so final article about Dale. 
Stevenson TWP Boy Breaks Neck Diving. Oh my goodness. Dale Brown of Southeast Salem broke his neck while diving oh into the Carter Tank Pond. So he dove in and he came back up and my grandmother said that he grabbed the back of his neck and then he went back under. And then after about two minutes, then they started to panic because he didn't come back up. He died? He died. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> there was a reaction in the room. They should have just kept his head above the water. They ran to go get some adults. Oh my goodness. They should have gotten him out of the water. Yeah, first. exactly. Uh, and then immediately afterwards, there was a discussion about, well, well, you don't know what happened. You know, you could have just been panicking. To be honest, when you're panicking, you don't really think straight. You really don't. No. So there was reasoning that was happening uh, and humanity given to the people who were on the record. So my dad is named after Dale. My middle brother, he's named after Dale. And I'm sure there's going to be other people in my family that name their children after Dale to keep the memory of him alive. So I think that's just another reason why it's important to tell a story, a narrative story, along with the showing the record. So, so has this person was always... born. I mean, they're excited about finding the name of a heretofore unknown ancestor on your family tree. I'm writing in the name of my great great grandparents, George Decker and Agnes L. Decker these two. And perhaps a story through that name. We found out that Edward Miller, he's our great great grandfather. He died, he actually he fell from a balcony and we know that we owned a roofing company so we think that maybe he was like on the roof and he fell yeah. off or something like that. But I finally found some, in some information on Catherine, my grandma. I didn't find that much though. Very frustrating, I think, because they were noticing that some of the other kids were, were able to get back very quickly while others were, were not. See where my family line ba went back super far. You know, campers who are coming from you know, places where they have been documented for centuries and centuries and centuries, on average have an easier time. And I also got to see where like my like 12th grandfather was married and born and died. And I thought that was really cool. Whereas students who are immigrants or African American, for example, or descendants of slaves in this country, it's just a much different process. So there's resources that exist for Hong Kong. You know, even though I'm adopted, and it'd probably be harder to go deeper into like my family that I've never actually known before. So right now, but instead, I've been researching about my adoptive family. I wasn't really able to find a lot, but I already had a bit of information from before. Mm -hmm. However, I was able to find out that my dad actually stayed in the U.S. a bit because, like, we're from Canada, mm -hmm. and I never knew he actually did that. Mm -hmm. So I have a few exact locations that he lived. So if you looked up, like, on Google Maps, you can look to see what that building looks like. Okay. If you want to do that. Yeah. Okay. It, it's challenging because, um... You have to go through all these files just to find one person. Yeah. So, 10th of September, 1925, Oscar Samuel. And this is the father, Ernest That's, Walker. Yep. Uh huh. And then Kath Catherine Walker. Yep. <laughs> so, formerly Angus. So, this is her maiden name. Okay. So, now we know when we're looking for a marriage record, we can look for a marriage record for Catherine. We now know who she's married to. My dad's great, great, great grandfather and um we didn't well we just found the father's name and we had unknown for it and now i can go ahead and actually change it now from unknown to the full name and the name is ernest walker this is the ancestor that i didn't really know who existed until now i searched it up and found the result it was like finding a big discovery it was basically like finding the titanic because you went so far back and you finally found a clue. What happened? What'd you find? Um, so, it, it's not a direct bloodline, but by marriage, I'm related to royalty. What? Um, Who? Henry, um... The young king! Ladies and gentlemen, we have royalty amongst us. Stellar class. So one of my great um, aunts, is related to um, a king of England. Ooh. 
Oh. Sire, how am I serving? <laughs> He's not a king! <laughs> like, I'm excited about history because this brings like a whole lot more. This so, is my mom, sorry. Daniel Mann. Be, um, He's my third great grandfather. Mm -hmm. And he was born on December 26th. He's an abolitionist and a dentist. He charged someone with assault mm -hmm. against a train conductor. On the train, he was uh, protecting a black man. And he, my ancestor and the black man were thrown off the train. Wow. Yeah. And the liberator, that uh, liberator, which is an abolitionist uh, publication. Very impressive. Does that make you feel, how does it make you feel when you read that story? Good. Good. What I hope to see at the end of this, right, from the campers, uh, is a multi-dimensional understanding of who they are. If young people can walk through life with a natural kind of understanding that this question is complicated and has multiple angles, I think that would be something I'm very, very proud of. Armed with new research skills, Finding Your Roots campers ventured beyond the camps to find their roots. Lindsay Fulton recognized names in Aiden's family tree that could connect him to a famous colonial settlement and sent him to find a set of silver books that could hold the answer. One of these books here. Ella and Ireland interviewed their great-grandfather Edwin Kaufman in rural Pennsylvania, who told a family story of conflict with a growing chocolate empire. Jordan drew on his extended family to investigate stories of Scottish landowners and African slaves that escaped to live free in the mountains of Jamaica. To be continued on Finding Your Roots, The Seedlings. Kids love to study themselves. We can show you how you can bring the tools of Finding Your Roots into your after-school program, summer camp, or classroom. Check out what happens when kids study their own DNA and family history by viewing our education programs and trying our research-based curriculum materials. For more information, visit us online. Major support for Finding Your Roots, The Seedlings, has been provided by the Benkovic Family Foundation, with additional support from WETA, Public Television for Greater Washington, the Hutchins Center for African and African American Research at Harvard, and the following.